<laughs> I can't believe. Oh, hey, sorry, just sitting here reading the dirt sheets. Can you believe some of you guys wrote in with some wrestling card questions? Apparently you guys dig wrestling cards. Hey, is this right? Are people really writing in for wrestling cards? Shouldn't they be writing in about action figures, wrestling figures, replica belts? No? Oh, right. Yeah, they meant to write in to Beckett about sports cards. Makes more sense. Oh, they didn't? Well, okay. Um, maybe Paul Lee or Terry Taylor sent you these questions? No? All right, wrestling fans. Producer says no. Producer says you sent in these questions. I'm going to do my best to answer all these questions for you today and hopefully help you out. So stick around for the inside scoops. What's up everybody, I'm Zan and this is Wrestling With Cards. As the title stated, I'm going to try to answer some of your questions today. People reach out to me on social media, all the platforms, again links to all that below in the show notes. Also like to look at my comments on my YouTube channel, which you're watching now, so leave a comment if you have a question. And sometimes I pull those and we'll answer them for future videos. Again, reach out to me on any social platform if you've got questions. I'll save them and get to them eventually as I can, but I'm happy to help everybody as much as I possibly can. First question, hey, what do you think of these rack packs? And of course we're looking at these classic, not the brand classic, but they're now a classic set, the 85 Tops WWF product. This question was sent in from Classic Retros 23 on Instagram. Make sure you give them a follow. So a few things on this one. First off, you guys know I really don't like ripping any sealed product. That being said, one cool thing about these rack packs is that you can see the top cards, or in some cases the bottom, depending on the configuration, in these packs so you kind of see what you're getting at least to some extent. This will also depend of course on how much you're paying for these and what the upside of what the visible cards and the potential of the cards inside these. At the time of recording these were priced around I saw anywhere from $150 upwards of $300 for multiple packs of these in one lot on several different auctions. In my opinion that is way too expensive for what's inside here I know that's kind of a hot take for 85 tops, and we'll get into that in a minute, but again, just my opinion. You could probably easily make the value up on this if you were to get a higher end nice copy of one of the Hogan's or that Andre in there where I think it's Jimmy Superfly Snook is jumping off his shoulders. And there's a couple other odds and ends in there that you could probably make the value up with. I stated this was a little bit of a controversial take. I'm going to stand by it. Guys, I'm not the biggest fan. Of 85 tops WWF. I know, I know. What? I haven't done a video series on this full set, although that is coming. That being said, I, this is the first WWF tops product, so there's going to be value there. But as far as just like the cards in it, I just don't see a ton of long term value from the wrestling card perspective. As wrestling fans, we know most of the names in here and we love them, but the cardboard aspect of wrestling is just not really following with these cards. Now, again, there's things in there that they are, the Hogan's, the Andre, etc., and there's some others, like I said, but I just feel like a lot of these names don't get the respect, and maybe that means that if you do jump on in these, you're on the front end of a trend of these going up in value. Of course, they're gonna go up in value very slowly over time, again, because it's the first WWF Tops product, but in my opinion, overall, I'd rather spend my couple hundred dollars elsewhere. Speaking of hot takes again, I've said it before, something else I don't see a lot of people talking about is the Hogan number 1 and 16 in this set. I really think those are going to be huge down the road. So that being said, you can do what you will with these rack backs. How rare do you think the certificate is that comes with the 1994 Action Pack autographs? I have them with mine, but you rarely see them when the autos are for sale. And this question comes in from David Boostified on IG. This is a great question and I honestly didn't even know these things existed until I bought my Macho Man 1994 Action Packed Autograph, which, spoiler, well, not really a spoiler because it's all in the archives, lots of good content. You can go check the video out there about what I thought about this card and some other aspects of it that you may not have known about. Also, if you want more Action Packed, make sure to check out the entire video series I did on the whole set going through each card. Again, video link there and share it with a friend. I honestly can't say that I've ever seen these certificates of authenticity from Action Pack sold separately or with either of these autograph cards, those being The Undertaker and The Macho Man. So that being said, I'm really not sure what to think of these. Could it be some added value whether you have one of these graded and authenticated by one of the grading companies or not? 
I think it could be because we just don't ever see them pop up. If you guys have more information about this, let the community know in the show notes. Leave a comment so everybody can see it and I could get back to you as well. But again, if you see these things floating around out there and they look like legit, you know, not like someone photocopied them like the dirt sheets I was reading, go ahead and maybe pick it up if it's affordable. It's a decent play just because you don't ever see them and you guys know how I feel about rarity and scarcity. You guys have made it this far. I want to thank you again for checking out the video and just a few other ways that you can help keep these videos going and keep supporting my content. Easiest thing you can do and it's free, hit the subscribe button and give me a like. Share this video on social platforms. Share it with all your friends, family members, wrestling fans, you name it. Get this video to them. And if you need links to all my social platforms, if you want to tag me in this, links below in the show notes for all platforms that you can find me on and give me a follow. Make sure to check out the podcasts that I'm involved with. Wrestling with Cards, the podcast. Same name as this one, same logo, same everything. However, there's a lot of different audio-only content that you won't find on this channel. So you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and subscribe to the podcast. Again, free of charge. That being said, if you do want to help the channel monetarily, you can check out links again in the show notes to my Patreon, where there's a bunch of different tiers. You can help contribute to as little as a dollar, and a dollar can go a long way with helping keeping these videos going, trust me. There's also links to Spotify. You can follow my Spotify account, also free. I guess I should have said that's in social, right? And if you want to buy me a coffee, I've got a coffee right here, always staying caffeinated while bringing these videos to you. Ah. Load the spaceship with the rocket fuel. Load it with the words. Nice video as well. Question. Do you know if Batista has an autograph card? This is from Michael who left this comment on one of my YouTube videos. To my knowledge, Batista doesn't have any factory certified autographs in any wrestling products. You can, however, find some of his autographs on some other types of trading cards in other releases. Guardians of the Galaxy, James Bond, Pretty sure Avengers is in there. He's got autographs in these products, just not wrestling, at least that I could see. It really is hard to believe that Batista doesn't have any WWE autograph products. I have done a lot of digging around looking for these and I just I feel like I'm missing something. Have you guys ever seen any actual WWF products with Batista's autograph on it? If so, leave a comment below and let the community know where they can find these autograph cards if they do exist. Now that being said, I guess you probably could seek out maybe the hand signed autographs, you know, Batista maybe signed one for a fan and it got authenticated by PSA or somebody just found it and they posted it on Macari in a top loader. I don't know. Those are out there. But speaking of hand signed cards, I was also wondering if you knew anything about or had any opinions on hand signed cards. This question came from Scott Crouch on Twitter and as a matter of fact, Scott, I do have opinions. Then again, that's what this video and this dirt sheet, no? Paulie and Terry Taylor still aren't? Okay. Yeah, it's all about opinions, I guess. You gotta know it's me, the greatest wrestler in the World Wrestling Federation. It's just a matter of time before it comes true. I have a very strict rule on hand-signed cards. I will never buy hand-signed base cards or any other card that didn't come out of the pack autographed, except for two exceptions. Number one, they have to be slabbed or authenticated by either PSA or BGS. Or number two is if I see video or photo evidence of the wrestler or the person signing the card in front of them. That way I know where it came from, I know who signed it, who sold it, who had it done. While I know there are a lot of Certificate of Authenticity, COA, in case you guys see that on the listing and you don't know what that means, there are a lot of those companies out there with a lot of them being truly legit. But that being said, I have seen a lot of pretenders out there, a lot of fake undertakers out there putting these stickers on just anything, you know, slap it on the back of an 8x10, slap it on the back of a belt, slap it on some cards, whatever. And there's just so many of them out there. And unfortunately, it seems like the grading companies are becoming this way too. Which is why I said about the authentication at the first of this part of the video that I specifically looked for PSA or BGS as far as autograph authentication. Because I think those two companies are legit. A lot of times I'll see some on-card autographs not factory certified in some of these slabs and it just makes me kind of question why. Also another thing to consider is the fact that I think the hobby really is split down the middle as far as if they like these cards that are not supposed to have autographs on them to have autographs on them. Some want the card in the truest fashion, no autograph. Others only want autographs if they're certified 
pack pull through the company or only release through the companies. I personally don't mind on-card autographs. One of my favorite cards to see with the on-card autographs is the 82-83 All-Stars. There's a lot of people out there that have those slabbed and I think they just look fantastic. So honestly, if I'm looking for an autograph and it's in a PSA or BGS slab, a legitimate one, not a fake one, and it says certified auto, whatever, I'd feel comfortable paying for that if in fact that's something I want. So hopefully that helps. I hope I was able to answer these questions thoroughly for you guys today. Or maybe if you're watching this and you didn't submit any questions, hopefully you learned something as you go forward in your journey in the hobby. I'm personally all about learning. I'm constantly trying to learn, constantly trying to evolve, polish up the process of how I buy and sell these cards. And as I've stated before, that's the whole reason I wanted to start creating content is to just get more information out there to make people think. And sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong but at least people are thinking. If I did bring you some value today, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give me a like, share this with a friend, make sure to check out the show notes for all the ways you can support the show. And once again, my social links are down there, so if you have a question for a future episode of Q&A, make sure to just send it to me. My DMs are open, you can tweet at me if you want. Uh, there's all different, I'm available on many different platforms, so whatever you're on, I'm probably on, unless it's MySpace, which I'm trying to revive that. But until then, Make sure to click the videos on the screen for more great wrestling card content, and we'll see you next time.